Believe it or not, but Russia is talking again about how to re-establish peace with Ukraine, and believe it or not, they're doing again so with the Istanbul Agreement. Yes, the very agreements that were sabotaged not just by Boris Johnson, but by the collective West in general, and that the Ukrainians then walked away from. So this news here that broke uh, on Friday, yesterday, is quite significant. And interestingly enough, in the in the New York Times or The Guardian, I couldn't find something about this yet. Uh, uh, you have to go to the Russian homepage in order to find talks about this. And funnily enough, uh, Russia Today actually focuses on the wrong issue. <laughs> Russia Today focuses on the part where Vladimir Putin said that uh, peace talks could be held in Saudi Arabia. And I will show you that video in just a moment because he said uh, both things within the same span of uh, four or five minutes. The mo the, the TASS news agency actually gets the important part right. Uh, it writes about that Putin again said that the Istanbul agreements is the, are the only way forward toward peace negoci negotiations. And this is quite a surprise because to all of us who've been watching uh, the development of this war for the last two and a half years, it's pretty clear that the Istanbul agreements are very beneficial to Ukraine. And, you know, it's this is bigger than just Vladimir Putin saying something out of context. You know, yesterday at the same time uh, or at a similar time, Sergei Lavrov again also talked about uh, the way forward to reestablish peace with Ukraine. So it seems as if though the Russians at the moment are willing and and actually uh, quite quite energetically um, laying out the basic terms for what could become a, a final agreement to re-establish peace. And I, I will not play this video here because Mr. Lavrov is speaking in uh, Russian with English subtitle, but Lord Bibo did a wonderful uh, job of like... Uh, of, of uh, summarizing the six main points that Mr. Lavrov lays out, no NATO membership for Ukraine and neutral status, a officially neutral status and non-alignment um, that Ukraine would take, then the restoration of the rights of the Russian population of the East, the restoration of the church, the, that um, has been that has been basically that has been banned by um, the, the, Mr. Zelensky and the the, the lawmakers uh, in in Ukraine. Then no possibility for the West to use Ukraine again as a proxy, and the taken territories in Ukraine they become Russian. These four oblasts. So this is kind of the catalog catalog that Mr. Lavrov lays out. While at the same time, Mr. Putin then talks about the, the about the concrete actual diplomatic way forward to get to where we where we've uh, where the weapons are finally silent and i i want to play this video here for you um, because mr putin puts his finger on uh, on the on the actually important point and that is how to get to peace and not just to a ceasefire um I will talk more about this in a second, but please watch these three minutes first. Can Russia take part in a peace conference if it is hosted by a friendly country like Saudi Arabia until the end of this year? You said about friendly relations between Russia and Saudi Arabia. It is exactly what it is. We consider Saudi Arabia as a friendly state. We have good relations with both the king and friendly personal relations with crown prince. I know and I'm sure that whatever Saudi Arabia does on this track, it does sincerely, no doubt here. So if such measures are organized in Saudi Arabia, the place, the venue, is acceptable, would be acceptable to us. But that's not the point. The point is, what shall we discuss? As you are aware, in Turkey, in Istanbul, we have been negotiating for a while, whose outcome was a document initialed by the head of the Ukrainian delegation. 
He put his, his signature. The document is available. It is a draft treaty, and the excerpt is uh, initialed by the head of the Ukrainian delegation. If Ukraine put their signature there, then they were satisfied on fundamental issues. Uh, we could have continued to discuss in details, but to thrash it completely, would rather trash it completely, would be a wrong thing to do. Otherwise, you could do the same with any document. We I can ready to continue a dialogue to attain peace, but building on the document that was prepared for detailed uh, discussions for many months and what was initialed by the Ukrainian side, we are ready to continue building on this. And there is a, an initiative of China and Brazil. These countries have a well thought over attitude to that and a, a group has been established in New York and we treat that with attention and respect and we know that all our friends including the BRICS members are set to conclude the conflict ASAP and by peaceful means we are aware that definitely this is an irritant for the global affairs and for Euro the European affairs and for the global economy like no other Russia is interested to uh, conclude it as, as soon as possible by peaceful means. We uh, would be ready to come back. It's, it was not us who stopped the negotiations. It was the Ukrainian side that said that we would not, they said, pursue more talks with, with uh, Russia. And uh, second, a decree by the Ukrainian president came out prohibiting talks with Russia. And it's still in place. Let him in the first place repeal that and everybody calls on us to pursue talks but the Ukrainian side banned negotiations with Russia it's ridiculous but the main point is the underpinnings and the underpinnings would be the, that draft document that was agreed upon during this Istanbul uh, negotiations process Yes, I mean here you go. It's it it all comes back to to Istanbul, and and this is this is fascinating again, also because what Mr. Lavrov lays out in his in his speech is more than the Istanbul Agreement, right? I mean the Istanbul Agreement, at least the the draft versions that kind of leaked and that we have seen in the in the West that were also analyzed by some scholars like. Um, Samuel Charap and Sergei Rachenko here in this in this piece from April uh, um, 2024, uh, they show that Ukraine got a lot and there would have been no occupation of these four oblasts. There would have been no clipping, clipping them off and, and annexing them to Russia. Um, the status of uh, uh, Crimea would have been put on hold and discussed again in uh, in ten years in the future, and uh, you know this would uh, this surprised, and we know from the Ukrainian diplomatic side that they were surprised by how much uh, Russia was actually willing to give at that point, which is why then a lot of these negotiators were so taken aback uh, when the when Mr. Zelensky actually walked walked away from. Um, from the agreement and rather chose to fight the, than than to than to agree to these terms. Um, now, of course, the Mr. Putin here actually didn't he he didn't cite any kind of other conditions, right? That especially what Mr. Lavrov is doing in his speech, he says like you must to take into consideration the the realities on the ground, the realities on the ground, that's a, that's a, um, a, a phrase that comes up a lot with the Russians right now, which means that, okay, in contrast to what they were able, willing to offer in Istanbul, now two and a half years later, after all of the bloodshed and after all of the fighting, uh, they are not willing to, to give that much. But Mr. Putin actually <laughs> says, look, the Istanbul agreement is still the basis for what, uh, for, for what can, can happen to go forward. And it, for him, all the time, Istanbul has been the, 
the 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 anchor point, the linchpin, and he has kept this agreement from his side secret. He never waived it. Uh, he never showed it to anyone and he never they never published it because he wants to go back to it and of course what the core of the agreement is and it is by now i think well understood and well uh, well documented that the central issue is no nato membership for ukraine the entirety of ukraine and no new uh, and a neutral status for it and probably that will go hand in hand with uh, restrictions on its military uh, capacities um, so that the uh, so that that point number five that the, the West cannot use Ukraine ever again that you keep the military small that that is uh, part and parcel of a verifiable deal and here we have historical precedents uh, this is more or less with what happened with Germany under the reunification agreement the four plus two agreement that was struck um, in which the, the 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 size of the German military was was capped at 180,000 uh, soldiers. The Bundeswehr cannot be larger than 180,000 according to that agreement, which was in accordance with all four uh, previous uh, victorious powers, right? The Americans, the French, the uh, the British, and 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 the Russians. And that that agreement was struck in uh, uh, 1989, right? Like. Uh, many, many years after the Second World War, over 40 years later. So um, what we are seeing here is the Russians actually preparing the ground and like now giving very clear signals that they're open for negotiations, that they're open for discussions, and that they would even thank third parties like Saudi Arabia, actually neutrals in this conflict, not the, not the sham stupid neutrality that the Swiss or the Austrians are doing, like, because neutrality in a great power conflict, of course, means neutrality in the great power conflict and not just in the shooting war. But let's put that one aside. Um, the, the 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 Swiss they they will need another twenty years until they understand what what what's meant with this, um you know the the other side. On the other side, we now have some tacit talks about some ceasefire that might have to be pursued in order to, um in order to deal with the situation in Ukraine. I mean, it is pretty clear that the U.S. is now walking away from this, right? The U.S is not interested anymore in, as Alex Christofferu keeps saying, Project Ukraine. Project Ukraine is uh, being dropped because the US is now refocusing its attention on Israel and uh, the support for Israel and against Iran. Uh, and it's uh, it's on the, on, on the verge of dropping Ukraine entirely on the feet of the uh, of the Europeans, and there are talks am amongst the, the Europeans, even in, in in the in the EU, of like how of going of maybe opting for a ceasefire, but the ceasefire plan that that not officially yet, but unofficially under the hood is is being discussed in order to freeze the conflict where it is, is definitely something that Mr. Uh, that that the Russians cannot agree to. Uh, the The big difference between a ceasefire and peace negotiations is that if you if you manage to uh, come to an agreement in order to have peace, you restore completely peaceful relations again between these two states. Uh, whereas the, the, the West at the moment, without asking Russia, of course, is kind of brainstorming, thinking about um, freezing the, the conflict where it is, accepting that Russia occupies a good part of Ukraine and then um, let the Ukrainians with, uh, withdraw and then strengthening them where they are. And this is something that, that um, the Russians are certainly certainly not going to do. They will continue to fight because they've also said that they, this time, they will not uh, withdraw their forces in order to signal goodwill. That's precisely what happened last time in uh, late March 2022. The Russians actually, when, when the Istanbul uh, negotiations proceeded and were looking uh, optimistic. They started withdrawing from Kiev. They started withdrawing from all of these outposts um, up to where they went. And to me, this was a very clear message and signal of like, okay, look, uh, do this, do this agreement with us, and we are already, we are already going back to signal to you 
that we are serious about uh, what we are proposing here. And then, of course, it didn't go that way. And today, the retreat of the Russians, the going back is being uh, uh, reinterpreted as the Russians being too weak and too, uh, too ill-equipped in order to, uh, to, to stage a real uh, occupation. And, well, you know, the narrative spin has been applied to this. And the Russians now said, learning from that experience, this is not what they're going to do anymore. They, will, they want to negotiate, but they will keep fighting until the, uh, until the documents are signed. And the, docu- uh, the documents need to, uh, need to actually end the conflict for good, not freeze it where it is. The Russians are very clear that they want the problem solved. And the problem is not that the Russians want more territory, as the West keeps saying, which is absolutely dumb. It's, this is, the, the Russians, from the beginning, said this is not about territory. This is about uh, Russian security. So they, will make sh- they want to make sure that they get a political settlement for a political problem that they have. Although, by now, the four oblasts are probably also a uh, non-negotiable point for the Russians that they stay with uh, Russia. Although, I must say now, having heard Vladimir Putin again say himself that the Istanbul Agreement is the basis, uh, this actually opens that for discussion, right? This, op- this, this would be something for the Ukrainians to say like, hey, by the way, you said Istanbul is the basis. In Istanbul, we would get the four, uh, the four oblasts back. Um, this is just, that's why I'm so surprised. And that's why I'm pretty sure that in Russia, a lot of people will be angry when they hear that. Because after uh, after two and a half years of fighting, then still having the prospect of, of the Istanbul agreement being implemented, uh, that would, if I was Russian, would sound like quite an, uh, quite an insult. Although, again, this is the offer for what, what is the beginning and the, the, the fundament of peace negotiations. Um, this is uh, this is where we are, and I do think now that Russia seriously believes that with uh, with more time that maybe the Ukrainians will come back to this to this prospect because it is now clear that they are losing this war and that the 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 NATO will not intervene with ground forces, which is the only thing that could save the the, the Ukrainians in in with with war methods of warfare, right? Everything else now has failed and is failing. And the question is just how long the carnage will continue. Um, but Istanbul, my friends, Istanbul and the, the, the assurance that negotiations can take place if Ukraine lifts the ban on negotiating with Vladimir Putin or if they find a way to actually circumvent that, that stupid decree. But and I, I, I agree here that if the Ukrainians actually change that decree and lift it, that would be the clearest of all signs that now they are ready for, for serious peace negotiations. And again, some third party BRIC state that will probably serve as the negotiation ground. Thank you very much for your attention today.